Welcome back to the channel. I'm Peter Mokri, a Dallas-based DP, photographer, gaffer with a one-ton grip van full of aperture lighting, and I am available for hire. In this episode, we take you behind the scenes on multiple lighting setups and also show sample footage with different lighting scenarios using the 1200D for a book light, a 300D as an accent light, and also the Amaran tubes as hair lights. I will also be using a false color LUT so you can see exactly where the light is hitting and what it's doing in the scene. Let's get into the details. We're gonna be doing multiple interviews across multiple spaces here in this studio. I was brought in as G&E, which is grip and electric. I provided my one ton grip van, aperture lights, and I had a request for an FX6, some tripods and audio, which I was able to rent out as well. I know a lot of viewers ask, how do you get this work? And this one actually came from this YouTube channel. Nate, who came down from Nashville with Bruce, is actually a viewer of the channel. He was able to see how I worked, knows the equipment that I have, and was very confident in my capabilities. Our key light is an eight x eight book light with a quarter grid diffusion and an ultra bounce on the back. I also used a solid floppy as a courtesy to prevent spill onto the director and the person asking the questions. And as always, our fill light is an ultra bounce. So I have a floppy ultra bounce right there. We are fighting windows at times. So we went with the Aperture 1200D Pro for our book light. This is our key light. We are using a wide reflector on the 1200D. And we do have the 1200D on a separate stand, so we have more control. The next light that we use in all our setups today is the Amaran T2C with a 45 degree grid. That is our hair light. It is adjustable to any color temperature we'd like, and there's a lot of control with the grid. That is Nate right there with the headphones on and, and Bruce sitting right next to him asking the questions and guiding the interviews. I'm always a fan of matching cameras, so having two FX6s on this shoot is awesome. We know we're gonna get the same look from both cameras. There isn't gonna be anything complicated when it comes to matching one camera to the other, especially when you do a custom white balance to start. The beauty of the space allowed us to have a wide angle that was really nice. It was a 35 millimeter 1.4 on the wide shot, and then our tight shot was an 85 millimeter 1.8. I'm gonna jump in for some sample footage. We only have the tight shot for this setup, but the other setups have more detailed wide and tight shots. And this is how it looks with the false color LUT applied. So you can see where the light is hitting and the levels that we're getting out of the shot. And then we move on to the next shot. So we wanted to motivate this window. We start moving in the book light. You see how easily it moves around on wheels and we start setting up the shot. Myself and Nate are giving each other ideas, adjusting the frame, kind of moving as a team. And I noticed that that back door was a little dark. So I got the 300D with a 36 degree spotlight mount. I added a CTO gel to warm it up. And now we got a pop of light on there. And now we're adjusting the levels to make everything look good. Here's the 300D with the 36 degree spotlight with a CTO gel added to it. I was able to cut it and adjust it to fill out that door perfectly. I opted for a low boy combo for the 1200D. And the reason is, is it gives me flexibility to move the light around. It's not a big footprint. I could tuck it into corners and it doesn't really get in the way. And that's why I chose that stand for this setup. We had the output set to 75%, so we were not even utilizing the full output of the light. And that's what the hair light looked like boomed over. The placement of your light does make a difference on your book light. If you see here on the left side, it's brighter than the right side, and that's closest to subject, so that's what we want. That's Bruce there on the left having the chat with the client. You can see in the background there the door that we added that spotlight to, and it actually brings out some great color. Here are some sneak peeks of the frames, but we're going to go ahead and cut over to me sitting in frame, showing you the lighting breakdown. Here's our wide with no lights on. We exposed for the outside. And here's our tight shot. You can actually see the light hitting the side of my face with no lights. This is the book light only. And then the hair light is turned on. And then we have the book light, hair light, and accent light all on at the same time. 
And then here's a tight shot of all three on at the same time. We now apply an Atomos false color LUT. This helps show me where the light is hitting and what it's doing in the scene. 50% middle gray is where I like to land on the brightest part of the face. If you see here on my right side, that's where we're landing. You can see what the light is doing, the book light, the hair light, and then the accent light when it's introduced and how it changes the scene. Utilizing this with zebras for myself with the FX6 helps me get perfect exposure every single time. And now we move to the next setup. Now you would think with such a big book light, it'd be a lot harder to set up and move around, but it actually makes it easy because we have such a big source, we're able to dial in the looks really quickly and light big spaces. And that made it real simple where we didn't have to put a lot of light on the background to get the looks that we wanted. If you look at the monitor on camera, you could get a sneak peek of the tight frame. And here's a wide look of the setup right there. We move on to our next setup. We have to be quick and efficient when doing this. This may look similar to what we had earlier, but we are actually over to the left a little more and our camera angles are different. So it does give us a totally different look, still a very similar look to the things that we've been doing. Now the wall was really dark, so I did have to use my spotlight to brighten up the wall and we just adjusted intensity to make it look good and we didn't have to go too high because of the framing. The spotlight came in handy again for lighting that wall right there. I was able to use the blades to cut it so it didn't hit the floor and also was a good nice edge. It worked out really well. Even with it being overcast outside all day, we still had changing light nonstop so that's why we had to introduce some light onto the brick there by the window. The wooden door was opened up from a previous frame giving this a different look and the tight shot isn't too tight on this one. And we move setups again. We were constantly moving setups over and over and over again. We had to be quick. We had to be efficient. We had a hard out at this studio space. Right now we decide, oh, those couches are ugly. We got to get them moved. So we start yanking the couches out of the way. We needed some light on the background. We do all the adjustments, but we're constantly trying to get the best possible shot we can, the best framing we can with the allotted time. And here's what it looks like with no lights on the wide shot and no lights on the tight shot. Now let's start introducing some lights to the mix. We have our first accent light in the background there. We have our hair light being added, and here's the wide of the hair light being added. Then we add our second accent to the wall, and here's a tighter shot of the second accent. We finish off with our book light. We have four lights working this scene, making it have a lot of depth and a great look to it. We wanted to keep it nice and bright. We didn't want to go dark and moody. So we wanted to make sure we introduced enough light to get the look we needed. This is with all the lights removed except for the book light. Now let's take a look at what the light did in our scene. We have the Atomos false color LUT applied so you can see exactly where the light is hitting and what it's doing to the different elements in the scene. We have the accent light that just fired up and then the hair light and the accent light. You can see the hair light is hitting my shoulders and my hair. And then we have the second accent light lighting up the brick wall behind me. Now we add the book light into the mix, the hair light, the accent light, one and two, everything's there. And this is what it looked like with everything fired up as well for the tighter shot. Now, let's see what it looks like with just the book light. This was a fun shoot. I want to give a big shout out to Nate from Nashville for bringing me on for this project. I really appreciate it. What did you guys think of the setups? What would you have done differently? Comment down below. Give me your input. And I know a few of you are probably going to ask, I want to see more details about that book light setup, how it's built out and everything. And I did capture that while I was filming that day. So here's a little sneak peek of the breakdown that's going to be coming out next week where I show all the parts and how I built it out.